Hey. Hello. My name's Maya. How are you doing? All right, actually. Yeah. Yeah. How are okay. you? On the topic of big songs, obviously you're well known for Jeepy Dippy and I'm Too Sexy. But yeah. People might be surprised to know that you actually work with Bob Dylan, Mick Jagger, David Bowie, yeah. yep. Side and Joy Division. How yes. important are those early moments of your career to you now? Do you find the overnight success trope frustrating? Um, the, the, the early shows um, are great training because there is, yeah. when, when we've done recent promotion or, or when we have done promotion and things go wrong or gigs go wrong, a lot of artists lose their shit very quickly. Mm. And we don't because we have done it for so long. We lost long. it years ago. We lost it years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and we've never found it. Yeah. Um, and so we, we, we don't get, we don't get, upset really we don't get perturbed it's just we we it is what it is yeah so if if the sound is bad I mean, it's very frustrating if your sound is crap or or the you know you're you have problems with um, promo and stuff but in reality no one's no one's dying no one's ill you just 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 deal with it in your stride yeah so the early shows put us in put us in good those shows put us in good stead and we we we, we toured in the late 70s um and back then during the punk and slightly afterwards, it was very common for people to, to pee into their, into their plastic glasses and throw it at the band. And, um, and we, we had all that. And, and that was a Barry Manilow gig. Yeah, that was a Barry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can just imagine. <laughs> yeah. So, but it was, it was pretty, I mean, yeah. the, the only thing that was weird, as Fred said, we were, I think we were quite well prepared as people because we'd done all the crappy gigs for years and years and years and years and years. But what we weren't prepared for was the speed of I'm Too Sexy's success. I don't think that... No, that was horrible. That was weird. And also the kind of track that it was. It wasn't like we broke with a, you know, like a kind of REM type track or something, you know, that you could consider not serious, but, you know, that seemed to have some credibility. I'm Too Sexy, we, even we didn't understand what it was to start. <laughs> to, to, to start. We just wrote it. We just wrote it, you know. <laughs> And I can remember, you know, you, you, fly, you go to America and we did you know, all sorts of shows. And, done, and I'm half with, I'm thinking, what, what is this? We did it, we did it acoustically uh, in the studio the other day. And I said to Fred, the weird thing about that song is it, it never needs anything else. It, yeah, it works work. every time. It every does, single time, no matter how you could play on a flute and it would still work <laughs> on a recorder or a triangle or well, maybe not a triangle. But um, it's, a, it's a weird thing that, uh, I yeah. don't, and I don't... I don't understand it. We don't understand it. We just, it was just one of those things, but it was at the very beginning. It was, uh, it was weird because also we'd only worked with Rob, the, the third guy we wrote it with. We'd only worked with him for about a year prior to the sexy happened, yeah, not even. Yeah. So we didn't have any grounding as a trio really. And, and we didn't, we didn't think I'm too sexy was a weird song because me and Richard, Richard and I had always listened to like, you know, different bands like, uh, Beefheart or, uh, or uh, Talking Heads. So we didn't see sex as a particularly odd song. We just thought it was a song. And Rob was the same. Rob was into P-Funk and bands of like Bootsy Collins and uh, George Clinton. So weirdness was not odd to us. No. So when everyone said this song's mad, I didn't know what they're talking about. I just thought... I mean, I can... No, it's not. I can see it now. Yeah. Much, much more. Yes, much. true. I, at the yeah. time, I didn't really... I didn't really get it. Um, and it, well, one thing about it was it was the first time that I realised I could sing deep you know low because uh, i wanted to be steve tyler really that's who i wanted to be um and not now so much but uh, <laughs> but steve i know i really i mean i think he's great um but i but when we did sex and we had that bottomy on the arm thing that's when i realized i could do that and it wasn't until we did sexy that i realized it so it, we, there was a lot of discovery it was yeah. you know our manager wasn't a manager before us our label wasn't a label before us you, you know there were lots of people in that mix for whom it was it was new for the first time, yeah. How quickly did things change? It went to number one in the US almost straight away, did it not? Um, yeah. Was it overnight that everything just kind of changed for you guys? Was it? Bit, I'd love to know what the numbers were like for Right Said Fred. It was. <laughs> it was pretty. Yeah, it, it did pretty, change incredibly quickly. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, we were just uh, we were just working in the gym, and then Radio One played it. I can't remember what day of the week it was, but they played it. And then suddenly the phone started ringing and I, and, and I said, oh, the gym's busy and it's the sun and use the word. And I'm like, can we talk to you? And I'm thinking, well, about what? 
you know, and then suddenly you realize all this song's happening. And, and then suddenly we're getting phone calls from, you know, Brazil and all, all over the place. And, uh, and, and you suddenly realize this song has just gone insane within months. The weird, yeah. And all, all pre-internet, you know, yeah, all, pre, all, yeah. all pre-net. So it was just very odd. Also, we, get, we used to get asked about things that nobody would ever ask us before. So yeah. I remember being in the gym, working in the, in the reception in the gym, and Sexy had just, it was very early days, just beginning to sort of take off. And the phone rang, and it was, uh, it was handed over to me, and it was apparently for me, and it was a newspaper. And it said, can you tell me what your feelings are about the release of Terry Waite? I'm sorry? <laughs> I mean, you don't know who Terry Waite is, do you? I can see in your face. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he was, he was held hostage for a long, long time in the Middle East. Yeah. Long, long time. And, um, and I was expecting to have, to have a view about his release. But the weird, so the, the weird thing is you have a hit record and then suddenly you are an expert in foreign affairs or yeah. the economy or tax or whatever it is. Um, and it's partly, I, I suppose, some artists use their celebrity status or their star status to launch careers in other areas. And that's probably where it, you know, where, where it starts. But that was the weirdest thing for us. And also being spotted in the street was weird. Yeah, I think that was, you that know, was people coming odd. outside your house and, and sort of you're just, you know, you're in the greengrocers doing what you've been doing for the last five, ten years and suddenly you can't do that anymore. Yeah. So I, I think that was the, we, we, didn't, we didn't take to the fame thing very well because we like being we're quite private people, so we like to be left alone. And uh, that didn't work at all. We, we also sexy was a very, we took our tops off and, and we didn't even think about it because we, um, no. the, the, um, the, the video director, James Le Bon, he just said, how do you feel about taking your shirts off? We went, all right. Didn't, we hadn't planned it. I mean, not, they, nothing was planned. They just said, this, this shot would be good if you took your shirts off. Okay, let's do it with shirts off. And then- no, after that, it was th- <laughs> Then we did, yeah. Talk about a then, rod for your own back. And, and, oh God! Yeah, and then people, you know, everyone's, <laughs> and so that that started happening a lot. So when we were doing live shows, they just shout and get them off, you know. Yeah. And um, so uh, you know, well, I thought they meant the band. <laughs> yeah, get, off, yeah. <laughs> get, get, get them off! <laughs> yeah, that, so yeah, it was. Um, we uh, the thing is when when it first happens, as you said, you kind of you don't really know that you don't you're you're in the eye of the storm. You don't yes, really, you, are, you yeah. don't really see it, and it's only you know when I look back and I think about some of the shows we did in the States and some of the shows we did over here. Um, and I remember we did a thing in Leicester Square in the very early days when Sexy was a hit. And the, we were waiting backstage and the guy said, um, do you want some intro music? Right, and I've learned the lesson, we've learned the lesson. Now always say what you think. So, but at the time we thought we'd be very easy going. We'd say, yeah, no, 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 you know, play what you want. Play, it doesn't matter to us, it doesn't matter. Anyway, he played the theme from Match of the Day. <laughs> Right. So, so we now we we now are much more careful about stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But it was. I have to say, yeah. Get back to your question. It was. It was extremely weird. Yeah. Um, and the, set, the 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 thing I remember very clearly was the pressure on the second single, the pressure on us to don't, write don't the second single. With Don't talk to kiss. Yeah. That was that was uh, that's when I suddenly thought, oh bloody hell, this is a nightmare. Yeah. That was uh, that was because you you know by that time you got used to it. You've kind of got used to the, not used to it exactly, but the fame thing is something that you quite like. And, um, and, you, and so, and you realize it's, it's, a, it's novelty, isn't and it? And it's a novelty thing. I mean, if, if, if the second single bombs and it's all gone. So we were very, very, you know, it was, I remember, I remember sitting in the car coming back from some radio station at night playing bits of Don't Talk, mm. various mixes and stuff. So yeah, it was, it was all very weird to start yeah. with. Yeah. And- of course, uh, I'm Too Sexy and Deeply Dippy were such a huge hit that you were nominated for two Ivan Novellos. You won two Ivan Novellos, I'm sorry. We did, we did. Um, how did it feel to have your music recognised with such a prestigious award? <laughs> it, at this, the, uh, I'm not just saying this, but it's, it's the only two awards that we refer to, yeah. really. Uh, we've got BMI awards, that's very nice. But I, I, the, the, the Ivan Novellos definitely have a credibility that other awards don't have. Yeah. Because I think a lot of a lot of other awards, people think that the labels have been, you know, aborted, aborted, or they've, or it's just manipulation. The Ivan have a have a, a legitimacy, legitimacy to them. I think that others don't. Yeah. So that's to us, it, 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 they're the two awards that we've referred to quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. The only thing I regret is that when a local hospital was opening a cancer unit, um, I gave mine away so they could raise raise money. 
<laughs> for the cancer unit, and I wish I hadn't done that. I've got mine. Yeah, Fred's got his. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. You know, but it's really one of those you live and learn. You live and learn. Do you have any advice for aspiring songwriters that would dream of winning an Ivan Novello one day, or is there anything that you wish you'd have been told that perhaps? You um, yeah, i will actually go with your gut. Yeah. I know it's a really corny thing to say, but second guessing. Take, uh, if someone says something and you think, yeah, actually, that's a good point, that chorus could come in quicker or that lyric is wrong, then that's fine. If, they, if, it, if, it, if it touches a nerve, but nine times out of ten, advice is just people mouthing off because they can. Um, and so if you've got a gut feeling about something, just stick with it. Yeah, but that's, 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 yeah, and it's really boring, but it's true. But also with us, one of the things I, I think with us, and it's probably uh, uh, true of a lot of players, if you come from a happy family, and you've got supportive friends, and it's, you know, your background is, is secure, you tend to think that everybody in the music business is like that. Supportive, kind, nice, patient. That's not true. <laughs> so stick with your family, stick with your friends, and recognize that when you walk into a, an office you know, with a song that, you know, that, that somebody's shown interest in, they've shown interest in the money that that song can make. They're not necessarily shown interest in you. So that's, that's always the, up, yeah, keep your, keep your guard up, always. Yes, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. It's a pleasure. Cheers, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.